Charlotte Motor Speedway all lit up for a Friday night fight on this fast mile and a half racetrack as we get set to bring you the NASCAR Nationwide Series in the Dollar General 300. Drivers transitioning, some from the Sprint Cup garage to their nationwide uniforms. Some announcers transitioning from the suit and tie in the countdown <laughs> studio out onto the racetrack to cover pit road for us. And we transition trackside for tonight's opening ceremony. Ladies and gentlemen, please rise and remove your hats as the United States Public Health Service Honor Cadre presents our nation's colors. Now remain standing as Chaplain Steve Keith, Commandant of the Air Force Chaplain at Corps College, offers tonight's invocation. Pray with me. Our gracious Lord and our God, we want to pause to say thank you for this awesome night in Charlotte, North Carolina. Lord God, we thank you for the opportunity to gather tonight to cheer on our teams. We pray that you would be with the drivers, give them skill of hand and quick wit and safety as they traverse this track. We pray for their crew chiefs and their teams as they strive for accuracy and speed. And Lord, we pray for these fans. We pray that you might allow us to rejoice together tonight in the freedom that is ours as Americans. And Lord God, tonight we would pause to say, we pray for health for women across America as we celebrate and we remember the cause of breast cancer this month. Lord God, tonight we ask that you would keep America free, that you would keep us great. We ask and pray in Jesus' name. And God's people said, Amen. Amen. Here to perform our national anthem. Please welcome national recording artist, Candy Coburn. can you see by the dawn's early light? What so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming, whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight all the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming and the rockets red glare the bombs bursting in air gave proof through the night that our flag was still there Oh, say does that star spangle And so it's almost time to climb aboard, buckle in, and go racing at the Charlotte Motor Speedway. A lot at stake tonight, down to the final four races of the season where the championship is concerned. Big extra pot of cash for four drivers up for grabs tonight. And of course, the prestige of a win at the sports home track. The engines fire next. NASCAR Nationwide Series at Charlotte, brought to you by Nationwide Insurance. Enter this code at codespotter.com for a chance to win one-of-a-kind NASCAR VIP experiences. Charlotte, North Carolina, a world financial center, home to much of the banking industry, home to much of the NASCAR industry. All the major teams, most all the drivers based in the Charlotte, North Carolina area, many of them within mere miles of the Charlotte Motor Speedway, where tonight, the fight for the NASCAR Nationwide Series Championship between Ricky Stenhouse Jr. and Elliott Sadler continues. Those two drivers amidst the field of NASCAR Sprint Cup drivers who have dominated action at this racetrack in the past, all going 300 miles in search of one trophy under the lights on a Friday night. Downtown and to actually uptown here in Charlotte and to its north and east 
the Charlotte Motor Speedway, where the engines will fire in just a little while on tonight's 300-mile go for the NASCAR Nationwide Series. And topside, Alan Bestrook along with two-time Charlotte Nationwide race winner Dale Jarrett and champion crew chief Andy Petrie. Going to show you a list here of the best average finish on the mile-and-a-half tracks for this season in the NASCAR Nationwide Series. And I want you to tell me your fearless prediction. Does the winner of tonight's race come from that list or somebody else? Uh, it'd be hard to go against the group that's, that's there in that list, but... <laughs> Can't I help again. Well, I see a name that's left off of there. To start with a K, Kyle Busch is not on there. And the man on the pole, Paul Menard, I think is going to have something to say about that, too. That I think it's going to come from the list. All right. That list yeah, is, I think is so. good for you. All right. Let's talk about track position and strategy. In the May race here at Charlotte, Matt Kenseth pitted with 50 to go, took tires, restarted fifth. Carl Edwards didn't pit. It took Matt until three laps to go to pass Carl for the lead and the win. What kind of strategy will we see tonight? Well, obviously, that one was it could have gone either way. So you're going to see that again tonight. It's not going to be just an, you know, a no-brainer strategy to win this thing because the tires hold up well, the speeds are going to be really high, and it's going to be hard to maintain that track position. These crew chiefs are going to be having to play a little chess. It's going to be interesting to see how it works out and how the circumstances dictate the strategy that these crew chiefs will be playing. Yeah, and you want your crew chief to make that right strategy as a driver because you're going to have to work hard on the racetrack. So put me in the right spot so I can use, utilize my car and how fast I can go in it. Don't want to have to pass a lot of cars if I don't have to. So we'll see how the strategy plays out at the end of this one if we get the late twist of plot. And the last three consecutive NASCAR Nationwide Series races, two drivers have finished in the top two spots. Brad Keselowski, Carl Edwards, one and two, three events in a row. Brad has won two of them on mile-and-a-half tracks. Carl won the one on the mile in Dover. We'll see if they're one-two at the end of 300 miles tonight. On a chilly night in Charlotte, it's time to go trackside and get these engines roaring. And now, for the most famous words in motorsports, here from our race sponsor, please welcome from Dollar General Corporation, Gail Ertker, Anita Elliott, and Karen Sensabaugh. Drivers, start your engines! They'll need a couple of minutes to warm on this night as the temperature will drop toward the 40s by the end of 300 miles. Ricky Stenhouse Jr., the championship leader, is our in-race reporter. We'll talk with the Mississippi native on the pace laps next from Charlotte. Championship leader in the NASCAR Nationwide Series broke through with his first win in this tour at Iowa Speedway, backed it up by sweeping the Iowa races in this spectacular finish where he and Carl Edwards went toe-to-toe -to -toe, and then Stenhouse with the engine failure coming to the flag got the boost across the finish line by his teammate Carl Edwards, Ricky Stenhouse Jr. in search of another win tonight and a boost in his bid for the NASCAR Nationwide Series Championship. As we look at the starting lineup, the only person in front of Stenhouse on that grid is Paul Menard, who starts on the pole. Stenhouse will be alongside him on the front row when we go racing in just moments. As you look at the rest of the starting lineup, we talk to our in-race reporter, who happens to be Ricky Stenhouse Jr. Hey, Ricky, Dale Jarrett, the ESPN. You have a copy? Yes, sir, Dale. I got you. All right, Ricky, thanks for talking with us tonight. Uh, and our first question comes from our mailbag, Whitney in Rogersville, Tennessee, asks, with just four races left to go, what do you have to do to make sure that your team stays focused on each race to ensure that you maintain your points lead? That's a great question, Dale. We got a, uh, a great black wing of speed and Cargill team. We, uh, we work really hard in the shop all week. Uh, they're dedicated as anybody, and uh, we just got to make sure that we don't make mistakes. Um, that's the biggest key for us this next four weeks is not making mistakes, and I think we can be there at the end. Hey, Ricky, we've talked a lot about in our practice shows, watching you guys. Practice in the afternoon, in the sun, you, don't, you only have four starts at this racetrack. How difficult for you as a young driver is it to know what you're going to need in your car tonight? That's a, uh, that's a tough thing to do as a race car driver. Our first four races here, we've had a struggle. Uh, the last race was a really good one for us, but uh, this race last year, we were awesome in practice. Fastest car out there. Got in the race and we were too loose. So 
I uh, put some middle notes in my head, and uh, I felt like we ended practice where we needed to be good for this race tonight. All right, Ricky, thanks for taking time to talk with us. Good luck there tonight. Now Andy's going to talk to your crew chief, Mike Kelly. 10-4, thank you. Hey, Mike, Andy Petrie in the booth. You got us? Andy, I got you. Hey, Mike, you got a young driver with a big prize on the line. How are you going to coach uh, your young driver tonight with this big pitcher on the line? And, Andy, what you got to do is you, you just got to break the race down in segments and take care of his car and uh, be around at the end. He, he's done a really good job this year for us, and uh, I feel he's up to the task tonight for sure. Okay, Mike, well, good luck tonight, and uh, thanks for talking to us. All right, thank you, Temple. Ricky Stenhouse, Jr., Mike Kelly, hoping to be the championship duo at the end of four more races, including tonight's. Stenhouse carrying one of our high-definition onboard cameras tonight, as is his rival for the championship, Elliot Sadler. Also have cameras in some pretty heavy hitters, Kyle Busch, Brad Keselowski, Carl Edwards. Some young guys, Stephen Wallace and Ryan Truex, hoping to pull off the upset at Charlotte. And Josh Wise, top right in that seven car, will have to go to the back of the grid. He hit the wall in qualifying. They repaired that car, but for post-impound adjustments, he'll drop to the back. And freshly changed into the top half of his fire suit and ready for his first report from pit road for this race. Our own double-duty pit reporter is Mike Massaro. Michael. Alan, as fast as I got down here to pit road, that is nothing in comparison to the speeds Kyle Busch has shown at this racetrack over the years. As we know, earlier this year, he eclipsed Mark Martin in the record books, becoming this series' all-time win leader. He's trying to break another record with Martin tonight, that being the all-time nationwide win leader here at the Charlotte Motor Speedway. Both of them have won here six times. This is Kyle Busch's first nationwide race since Richmond a few weeks ago. He comes back here looking to reassert his dominance. One other note, in two of his six nationwide wins here in Charlotte, he started sixth. That's where he'll roll off again tonight, Shannon Spake. Well, Mike, Kenny Wallace making history here tonight as he's making his 519th start, tying Jason Keller for all-time starts in the Nationwide Series. He's also racing for a little extra cash, $100,000, as he's one of the four Dash for Cash drivers. In yesterday's practice, Wallace said his car was the best he's had in his career. While they did make some changes trying to keep up with the racetrack, the car's still very good, and he rolls off 19th. Dr. Jerry Punch. Well, folks, picture this. Now, you're 19 years old, and someone says, I'm going to give you a chance to win $100,000 in a single night. And all you got to do is drive 190 miles an hour for three hours against the world's greatest stock car drivers and beat names like Kyle Busch and Carl Edwards. And if you do that, you win 100 grand. Well, that's the challenge that faces 19-year-old Ryan Truex here tonight, making only his 16th start of the year. The young man said, you know what? If I didn't think I could do it, I wouldn't climb through the window. How's that for confidence for a young man hoping to have a career here in NASCAR? Nate Burns. Championship contender Elliot Sadler can also win $100,000 tonight in the nationwide Dash for Cash. You know where the money's going? Well, it's to the swimming pool he promised wife Amanda as part of their remodeling project. Now, Elliot's already had a chance to win earlier this year. In fact, the first Dash for Cash race in Daytona, Elliot was leading on the final lap. But it wasn't meant to be. There was an accident, and he didn't get the $100,000. But, you know, Amanda got a pool in the meantime. He gave her a plastic kiddie pool. So if he wins tonight, Amanda gets the full in-ground pool at their house. And Elliot's trying to do that in addition to make up some ground on that championship leader, Ricky Stenhouse. Helen. That's fun, Dave. Hometown race tonight for our over-the-wall reporter, Mark Hollywood Armstrong, native of Gastonia, North Carolina, Charlotte suburb. What's racing at home mean to you, Hollywood? Well, uh, guys, it means a lot to these crew guys up and down pit road. They feel like this is their home track. With most teams doing all their practice within a 20-mile radius here in Charlotte, they feel like that they got an extra advantage tonight. But along with a home track comes a lot of family and friends, and certainly I got a couple of big Hollywood fans here tonight too. <laughs> I love it, Mark. Terrific. Have a great night down there. Thank you. Our Goodyear track facts before we go green. Mile and a half track, 300 miles, means 200 laps. Yeah, and that 24 degrees of banking flattens out very quickly as you exit turns two and four. That's what makes those corners so difficult. Four races to go in the championship. Stenhouse and Sadler, toe-to-toe -to -toe on this fast track. The heavy hitters in the field. The track itself, where turns two and turn four are the trouble spots. And the $100,000 nationwide insurance dash for cash bonus. What's on the line tonight? In the Dollar General 300, we are ready to go racing in Charlotte. Green flag is out.
Not a good start for Stenhouse in the six. Yeah, it's hard to put, put your finger on exactly why it didn't get going well. I mean, I don't think he spun the tire. Just no, go. It almost looked like he had the thing in fourth gear to start with, and does it no faster than it came up to speed. Paul Menard, 33, leads lap one. 22, Keselowski, second. Edwards, Kyle Busch, then Stenhouse back to fifth. A little close moment there back in the field. Stephen Wallace slid up between cars. Looked like he had a handful down in one and two. Everybody okay, though. The places to watch on this racetrack, the exit of turn two, the exit of turn four, where the banking falls away. Yeah, it just literally falls out from under you, and, and as it flattens out, you need more room as you exit there. That's why racing side-by-side side is so treacherous. Trevor Bain, 16. Elliott Sadler, 2. That's for 5th. Check that. I'm sorry. That's for 11th and 12th. And Justin Allgaier, oh. 31. Look to the outside of Brian Scott. Scott slid up in front of him. A little contact there as they came through the trial. Well, as Justin Allgaier tried to go back to the inside after getting that block. Now, these speeds are incredibly fast. Already over 182 miles an hour. In race trim. Yeah, I know. This is wild. Something else now. And they look fast. That's Eric Almirola in the 88 at the tail end of this group. And again, this is for 9th, 10th, 11th, 12th, and 13th. You can see these cars bottoming out some as they go down into turn one. Where you'll hear, we'll hear the, talk, the drivers talk about their car landing sometimes. Just wanted it pointed in the right direction whenever it happens to hit down there. Okay, well, make sure you have your landing gear down. Yeah. Michael Lynette, 62. Ryan Truex, 99. 17th and 18th places. With Casey Kane in that 38 behind him. Had a tough qualifying lap. Usually, Kane is up front here at Charlotte. And might get there before the night's over. Brian Scott, Trevor Bain there while we check on the lead. Here comes Brad Keselowski. Not quite. But he had a run on him in the middle of the corner. Yeah, he closed the gap on Menard getting into turn three. He looked like he might make the move, but Menard holds him off. Remember back just a week ago, it was... These two cars were two of the fastest at Kansas. Brad Keselowski is much faster than anyone else. See, now Trevor Bain able to make that pass on Brian Scott out of turn two. Keselowski led so many of the laps of that race last Saturday at Kansas. What was it, 173 of the 200? Yeah, that car was just incredible. He did a great job with it. Paul Menard had a good car, but had a penalty and had to get to the back of the pack. Made his way back into the top five before the day was over. Everybody right along that white line at the bottom of the track. Now, these cars with the, the lesser amount of horsepower, if you can keep the RPMs up as you go through the corner, it, it, it's good that you can run down there the shorter way around unless you have to put too much wheel into it, which scrubs off speed. Speaking of not at the bottom of the racetrack, Kozlowski couldn't find a way under Paul Menard. Well, let's see what this upper lane does for me. Yeah, I've been watching him a little bit. He runs that little higher line off of turn two, trying to get some momentum down the back straightaway. It seems to work. He can close that gap right down to the back bumper of the 33, but just can't quite make whoop, it work. You see him wiggle whoop, there. Whoop, whoop, yep. Yeah, and what, what may work for him at some point in time, if he can get close enough to get his left front fender over on the right rear quarter panel of Paul Menard's number 33 car, then he can slow that car down and probably make it a little bit loose also. By using the air bubble off the front of his car, not by hitting him. Exactly. Just to clarify. Well, he but could, he may hit him. He could slow him down if he hit him, yeah. yeah. Big slide there, Casey Kane. Squeeze it up in front of a net. And that put Casey into the 18th position. See if he's able to make any kind of progress toward the front as this field settles in. There are the top two. Lennard and Keslowski. Early in the going tonight at Charlotte Motor Speedway in the NASCAR Nationwide Series. It's the Dollar General 300 from Charlotte. 
Make sure to go to NASCAR.com for all your latest NASCAR information. Very early in the going. And Brad Kozlowski in that white 22 has fallen back a little bit off the bumper of Paul Menard, the race leader, in that neon number 33. Caution free so far. Championship, Ricky Stenhouse Jr. slipped back in the uh, break on the initial start. He's running fifth. Elliot Sadler is running in 11th. And Elliot gave us something to watch uh, a couple of laps ago on turn number four. Exactly what we were talking about. When that banking falls away from you, you need a little room. See, Elliot just scuffed the wall out of four. So Sadler, holding his uh, track position at the moment, started 12th, running 12th, I'm sorry, running 11th. And while we watch Elliot at work, what are they saying, Dave, down in the two pit? Hey, Alan, right now he's radioing in that the track bar adjustment that they worked on in practice might be the way to go. He called it free to the wall. <laughs> and you can see how he moves out right there, only that time he didn't hit it like he did on lap eight. Yeah, hitting that wall is not free. That's very costly. Yeah, we followed Elliott some yesterday, and he was talking about that his car had plenty of side bite in it. And they were actually looking to take a little bit of that away. Apparently did that maybe with a track bar adjustment. So now that he needs some of that back tonight, probably because of the extra speed that we're seeing here, yeah, he'll probably make a track bar adjustment that first time they get on pit road. From a lot of guys we heard from, they were saying this track cooled down. The front tires kept gripping really well. And they, they would actually probably gain grip over the rear, making the cars looser as the track cools off. Unscheduled pit stop for Jeremy Clement while Ricky Stenhouse Jr. sits in fifth position. Remember, he started on the front row and just on the initial start didn't go as well as Paul Menard did. Seems like he's going pretty good since then, but it didn't get going very quick. Love listening when we go with these onboard cameras to how little time these guys are off the gas in the corners at this racetrack in these nationwide cars with that tapered spacer we talked about earlier on countdown yeah there'll be some of these drivers that literally won't ever come all the way out of the gas they'll keep the rear end pulling it helps them not to get the car loose it instead of backing all the way out of the throttle sometimes the car will really make a wiggle let's listen as he goes into turn one well he's not out long one Mississippi, two, and one. <laughs> and I did that instead of a thousand two, because where is he from? Mississippi. Uh, yeah. Way to work with him. There you, go. you can see right there just how quickly you come up on the lap traffic, too. And it, it, that's how hard you have to drive. You really have to be paying attention and watching those cars. So Stenhouse settled in line. Remember that as NASCAR's championships, championship system works this year, one point per position. So Stenhouse entering this race, 20 points ahead of Elliott Sadler, means he has 20 positions to give. But over the course of four races, that's not a lot. <laughs> not over the course of this night, that's not a lot because anything can happen. We see a lot of cars finish on the league lap here, and uh, you, know, you have a problem right at the end. That lead could be gone away, but one thing he knows right now is he's in front of the two cars, so he's increased that points late at this point in time. Still early in the going at Charlotte Motor Speedway. Paul Menard has led all of the laps so far in that 33 car. Very fast recently, but Menard's still looking to get that thing into victory lane. 20 races into the season and the funny car contenders arrived at Phoenix separated by just two points. Matt Hagen took over the points lead two weeks ago. He's last year's runner-up in the championship. Mike Neff led the points for 15 races driving for John Forbes. Qualifying tonight, final Sunday on ESPN2. Cleanup continuing on the first caution of tonight's NASCAR Nationwide Series race here at Charlotte. Tomorrow, NASCAR Now gets you ready for the Sprint Cup race 
ESPN2, 10 a.m. Eastern Time. Then the Bank of America 500, Race 5 in the chase, 7 Eastern on ABC. NHRA is running the Arizona Nationals this weekend, qualifying late night Saturday, and the finals Sunday on ESPN2. And on Sunday, the Eyes on IndyCar World Championship from Las Vegas, ABC3 Eastern Time, presented by Sunoco. Title contenders Will Power and Dario Franchitti starting 17th and 18th. That's that? pretty interesting. Tony Canon on pole out there. Uh, Ricky Stenhouse Jr. is going to be the new leader of this race. Right side tires only for the six. Uh, Allgaier's 31. Sadler's two. Kyle Busch first with four tires. He's fourth in line. Saw the brief flare up on pit road when Brad Keselowski left his stall in that 22. Yeah, just a little bit of spillage there from the gas can. You can see uh, the overflow is just coming out a little bit. You got those lug nuts that just came off the car. Get up under the tires. They spin the tires coming out. That's all you need. It's a little spark, a little fuel, a little fire. So a little strategy gets a bonus point toward the championship for the six, Dave. They sure did, and with a two-tire call. Mikey said the car was out of the track. It's a two-tire call in the uh, front position there. Going to put it in the track. We're hoping to get a little air on the front of the nose and get it settled down here. We got us a bonus point right now, and uh, we'll see what it does out front. Will the two tires make any difference over the four in terms of that handling? We'll see. All right. They're, uh, of course, they know now early what they can do, Alan, uh, early in the race, see what two will do, and if they can play that strategy ever again. I like it. We'll get some out front. See what it'll do. I think it's great. If, you know, collecting that bonus point. I think Ernie Cope probably had that in mind for Elliott Sadler, too. Just yeah, I think, yeah. <laughs> exactly, somebody else yeah. did it first. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, another two-tire stop was Josh Wise, who's back in ninth. Josh had a good car in practice and a good first lap qualifying. Got a little loose out of four and damaged the right side of that Chevrolet. And started at the back of the field and charged up through in the opening run. And now, with that two-tire stop, has uh, put himself up into the ninth position for this restart right there in row number five. And Kyle Busch, his team really uh, put a whooping on the other four-tire changers. Yeah, so Kyle the first with four tires, second row outside, and Kyle has been known to go to the extreme outside on a restart and try and gain a few spots quickly. Wouldn't surprise me at all to see that here. Not going to have the opportunity. Allgaier slips up a little bit in front of him. Looks like Kyle has to check up for a second. Keselowski gets a big run on Kyle coming off the corner. And Paul Menard is through. Logano as well. Guys, they've got four tires, so Kyle shuffled back a little bit. You see Elliott Sadler stick his nose out there. He was trying to see if he could make that high line work. He'd like to get a bonus point also for leading this race. Third place, Menard trying to come to the inside in that 33 on Justin Allgaier. Don't think this is a situation where the two tires will hurt these guys right now. Four tires is going to take a little bit of time for the air pressures to build up and, and really get going. Could be later on in the run as we see some close racing, three wide racing entering turn one. Bright yellow car, Sam Hortis Jr. in the 12. Trevor Bain, the Daytona 500 winner, to his outside. Brian Vickers in the pink 32. Got a charge down low. You can race three wide here. It's not advisable to try to do it a lot. And <laughs> usually by the time you get to the entrance of the, these turns one and three, you want to have things sorted out. Because then you're facing those tricky corner exits we talked about. Yeah. It's hard enough driving in here at the speeds they're driving single foul. You can see him doing it very well right now. Double foul. Brian Scott in the 11. Inside. I got it pretty good. Yeah, Carl Edwards hit the wall pretty good coming off turn four last lap. See everybody racing hard. Got a, yeah, he hit it pretty good. Hit the concrete part of it right where the safer barrier runs out. Boy, it looks like the 18 hit it also. Yeah. How about that? 
We Both talk again about how it flattens out. You get behind a car. You've got no air on the front of uh, the nose of your car. So you lose it all of a sudden, and you're too far gone at that point to do anything about it. Remember, Carl Edwards in the 60, Kyle Busch in the 18. While not eligible for the Drivers' Championship, there is the owners or team standings that NASCAR keeps track of. And they're separated by only seven points entering this event. Joe Gibbs Racing and Roush Fenway Racing's 18 and 60 cars. Yeah, if the 18 got any part of the wall, he got a lot less than what Carl, uh, Carl Edwards did. You can see that was a pretty solid hit by Carl. Couldn't do some damage there and some handling issues. Interesting that Kyle was the first of the cars that changed four tires on the restart. But it looked like he kind of got bottled in behind that 31 of Allgaier for a moment. Had to check up, and some guys got by him before he got the steam going again. Yeah, I think his car is better after it runs a few laps. I saw the, at the start of the race that he didn't get going like, you know, the 22 and the 33 got going pretty good. He didn't, but then as they ran about 10 laps, 15 laps, he started to run lap times comparable to the leaders. It's probably a little quicker. Two tires won't be a shock to any more of these crew chiefs here with it. You know, <laughs> yeah, I mean, I working so. pretty well. See Kyle Busch take that spot away. Justin Allgaier moved into the top five. Ah, that fascinating sound again. Just that millisecond off the gas in the middle of these corners at 180 miles an hour. Ricky Stenhouse Jr. has put the track position. The strategy call by his crew chief Mike Kelly gave him to good use. He's motored away from Elliott Sadler. A little over a second the gap now. Just past 50 miles into tonight's race. No fuel pressure. See, there's something wrong with that deal. Charlotte Motor Speedway, second caution of the race. That is Reed Sorensen's 82 car stopped on the apron of the track in turn number two with no power. He was 17th before slowing, coming through the pit lane, and coasting to a stop in turn number two. Sorensen entering the race third in the Nationwide Series Championship. He says he has no fuel pressure, and we know he's got plenty of fuel. They just pitted just a few laps ago. And even if they didn't, they had it full when the race started. They'd still have plenty. All right, what's strategy here? You pit? Oh, Lord. Front runners, top five. You pit? Uh, <laughs> so the, you know, the leader's one that's going to make the call here. If he stays out, he'll, he'll keep a lot of cars on the track. If he does make a move to pit road, I think he'll bring quite a few with him. Almost just have to be fuel, though, wouldn't it? Yeah, I'd just get gas. I wouldn't even put tires on right now. Ran nine laps. Yeah, and he's staying out. Ricky's staying out, staying out. That'll keep a lot of them out. Yeah, you see, here comes Carl. He needs to come in because his right side is damaged pretty good. It'll be a good opportunity for his team to fix that. You can see right there, man, it hit pretty hard. He's coming to you, Dave. Yeah, they decided to come down and uh, take this opportunity to work on it just a little bit. Carl reported that the car really doesn't steer any worse, but they want the body for the aerodynamics definitely better and to get some new tires on there as well. The 38 car is in the pits as well, guys. This car was a mess in practice. Stuart Cooper, the crew chief, told me that they didn't know what they'd have to start the race and they didn't have a good race car. So on the first stop, they made a shock adjustment. They're gonna make another shock adjustment there. They've uh, made spring rubber adjustments, air pressure adjustments, wedge adjustments, and they're gonna do some more, Alan, to try to get it somewhere where Casey can be competitive. Is there anything they didn't do, Dave? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, pull out the That was back. a mouthful. Pull out the backup car. <laughs> Well, find out what happened to Reed Sorensen's car in a minute as the 82 gets pushed back around under caution for the second time. Carl Edwards gets some work done on his car after getting into the wall. Doubling up for the restart from the second caution here at Charlotte Motor Speedway in tonight's NASCAR Nationwide Series 300 miler. Yellow flag waving when Reed Sorensen's car stopped in turn two. Carl Edwards, extensive time on pit road under this caution. Getting the right side of that 60 car attended to after this. Yeah, running high, lost a lot of the air on the nose into the wall. Tim Brewer in our Craftsman Tech Garage. They paid a lot of attention up under that right rear fender. Tell you what, A.B., that's a serious condition because over on the right side, that's where the exhaust pipes come out. These exhaust pipes are right on the side of the car right here. But, Alan, all that exhaust is coming on here underneath the wheel well, and it's going up. And if he damaged these aluminum crush panels right up here in this area, all that carbon monoxide, A.B., it's going right inside the car. That's what Carl's going to be breathing the rest of the night. A.B.? 
I know you've had that happen before, DJ. Oh, yeah, too much. That's not a good situation uh, if he happens to get in that. Just a 300-mile race can probably make it tonight, but could affect him for tomorrow night. So you have to make sure that he gets some oxygen or something, get his system cleaned out. See if they fixed that car, though. Well, they did work on it. They put, looked like some uh, bare bond material, and they may have sealed it up uh, good enough for Carl. They t spent plenty of time working on it. No, it's not a full moon. We Pretty. checked. Because full moon races at night can be a little wild. That's not saying this one won't get wild. Elliot Sadler in the two, pushing Brad Keselowski, Paul Menard, three wide for the lead, turn one. Well, I've really seen this two car take off both times. He was pushing Ricky Stenhouse the time before, pushes Brad Keselowski to the lead. But again, that six car Stenhouse just doesn't get up to speed like the rest of the car. That is dicey. Wow. Back with that yellow car, Sam Hornish, where they're three wide. That's where I was holding my breath. Yeah, Sam's found himself in that position two or three times already early in this race. Whoa, oh, see Mike oh, Bliss out of shape. Yeah, we saw that two and six really racing each other hard off turn two also. Second place puts Sadler up in second. Stenhouse in third, Menard 33, Allgaier 31 for fourth and fifth. Give that to Menard. Allgaier up the racetrack. There's Trevor Bain underneath him. Allgaier with a little strategy earlier, Shannon. What are they saying now? Well, that strategy was two tires, and on that last restart, he said two tires way too tight. So they were actually looking forward to this restart because all the other guys had another cycle on their tires, and they thought it might even it out. Cycle meaning they ran them, got them up to racing temperature, then cooled off by running slowly under the caution. That's generally what you'll find that two tires would do to your race car. It's going to make it tighter, so... You're going to do that, and if they happen to do it again, they'll probably make an adjustment to the air pressure or to the race car. That 18 car, Kyle Busch, I know he didn't get into the wall as hard as Carl Edwards did earlier, but he's not going any place like we're used to seeing Kyle Busch go. Looks like he almost touched it again with that lap off of turn four. Hornish 12, Brian Scott 11, 10th place, heard the report earlier, Roger Penske feels like he's going to be able to put sponsorship together to run Sam Hornish in the Nationwide Series full-time next year, Brian Scott in the 11, announcing that Dollar General would sponsor him with Joe Gibbs Racing for the full Nationwide Series next year, along with another 10 races for another Joe Gibbs Nationwide car, combination of Kyle Busch and Joey Logano and sponsoring Joey Logano in a limited number of Sprint Cup races and sponsor Kyle Busch and Kyle Busch Motorsports <laughs> in a limited number of Camping World Truck Series races. Making a big commitment to the sport, but it's nice to see. Hopefully uh, some other companies will follow suit. Okay, Dale, you're, you know, your second point, just like you see Elliot Sadler, you got the point leader behind you. How hard are you going to race him at this point in the race? Race him hard, keep him back there. Yeah, you don't want him getting any air to the nose of that car. You want to keep him back there, make him think something, you know, a little bit of miss with his race car. Anything that you can do to keep that car behind. And if you're Stenhouse on the other side of the coin, you want to get up there and you want to race, but you know what? Having that guy right in front of you, that's kind of nice psychology. Yeah, and this is where he needs that experienced crew chief and Mike Kelly to say, hey, this is a really good spot. Just right here. Hey, if that 33 gets on your bumper, let him go. <laughs> When like it makes that? you loose like that, yeah, you yeah. sure do. Third place here, Paul Menard, the pole sitter for tonight's race. Is he going to be able to slide up in front of him? Yeah, he's got him now. I think that's probably a situation where Stenhouse wasn't going to press the issue. Menard made his car a little bit loose by getting on the back bumper, and creating a little bit of disturbance with the air back there. So, Menard back up to third place. Remember, he lost a little track position earlier when the 22 team went for four tires on the opening stop. 
and four others went for just right sides. Brad Keselowski, a four-time winner this season, including the last two races on a mile-and-a-half track, leads on a mile-and-a-half Charlotte Motor Speedway tonight. Looking at the leader of tonight's NASCAR Nationwide Series race, Brad Keselowski and the new second-place runner, Paul Menard, just underneath Elliott Sadler to grab the number two spot. As we come back from the break, Sadler back to third with Kyle Busch now fourth and Joey Logano running in fifth. Rusty Wallace, Big Brad Doherty downstairs in the ESPN pit studio looking on. And Elliot Sadler, one of the guys in that nationwide insurance dash for cash tonight. What are you seeing so far, guys? Well right, well, right now, he's going for the money, no doubt about that. But what I got my eye on, Al, is the two tires, how that's working for Elliot Sadler, especially Ricky Stenhouse also. These guys racing for the, each other for the points. And right now, it looks like it's okay at best. Elliot running third and Stenhouse in seventh. He just got past my Menard to see there, but I am surprised that it's holding up this good. But this track, guys, is a style of track that doesn't tear tires up too bad. And Brad, I think it's going to work out late in the run if they got to do it. Yeah, I agree with you, Rusty. And as far as the dash for cash, guys, obviously Elliott, Ricky Stenhouse Jr., both of those guys have been very competitive, staying in that top ten. Kenny Wallace and Ryan Truex, both of those guys are stuck together back at 19th and 20th, struggling a little bit, guys, to go forward. But we got a lot of racing left. Maybe. Right might have to see a little strategy out of those teams, Brad, later if they're going to take a try, a try at stealing that money, huh? Absolutely. Somebody's got to get that money, baby. <laughs> I know you always like that. <laughs> uh, we're paying particular attention to Stenhouse Jr. here in these last couple of moments. Remember, he was the leader on that restart a little bit ago. He just lost sixth position to his teammate Trevor Bain. Looks like he's back. Got, yeah, a little bit of a handling issue here with this car. I noticed for a couple of laps, he could not get into the corner whatsoever. Looks like he's been able to get behind the car and maybe help uh, take that problem away just a little bit. What are they saying there, Dave? Well, some trash got on the grill of the six car. The temps were up to 260. He had to let his teammate Trevor Bain buy in the 16 so that then he could back up and get that trash to fall off the grill. Uh, he was asked if he's got, uh, well, they're... They're, uh, okay, then Elliot Sadler has the same issue, but the six car of Ricky Stenhouse has it solved, guys. Yeah, you know what it is? It's, it's that bear bond that they put on Carl Edwards' car. It, it come off. We saw it. We got a shot there one time. I might have been in, while we were in break where it looked like Elliot Sadler and Ricky Stenhouse I both hit it. Came in pieces. Look, looked like when Elliot hit it and maybe some of it got on Stenhouse's grill. Yep, but uh, for an end of that six car, it looks good now. Yeah, it looks clean. But he's fallen back to seventh place where he was the leader on the restart a little while ago. Yeah, yeah. we thought something was wrong. I mean, because he went back so quickly. And I guess that's what he was trying to do is get behind the 16, his teammate. Yeah, and the temperature had gone up. He had gotten so loose that he couldn't get in the corner with that on the, the grill of the car. So he's able to pick the speed back up now. So it should be okay. So in the world of multitasking, while Dave was reporting to us on the trash on the grill of the six and their efforts to remove it, he was also getting a report into him that he's now gone back and clarified on Elliot Sadler in the two cars. Similar issue there, David? 240, 270. Those numbers are a bit high for the temperatures on water and oil. And so uh, he asked if he had it on. And I think we saw it was either in brake or something. Else. We saw it flying up and hitting the two car as well. So uh, that same debris apparently hitting both of those cars. Here's that replay right there. Yep. Uh, Brad Kozlowski hits it. And Elliot Sadler hits it. Tell us Stenhouse got a piece of it. Bear yeah. bond is well. It's just this material is sticky on on one side, and it you know it's it's very durable too. So you can use it as it's like a think of it as just a big huge piece of duct tape, and that's what they put underneath the wheel wells of the six car Carl Edwards to try to seal those wheel the wheel wells from the exhaust fumes. Yeah. So Sadler running in third position, 3.7 seconds behind as we hit 100 miles. In the Dollar General 300, third of the way through at Charlotte Motor Speedway, NASCAR Nationwide Series on ESPN2. Brad Keselowski, the leader, not that far away from green flag pit stops. Back at the Charlotte Motor Speedway, the leaders working on pit road. Kyle Busch, one of them, complaining the car is just a little bit too tight to make an air pressure adjustment and a four-tire change to the 18 car, Shannon Spake. Joey Logano saying he's loose on the gas, getting through the turns. They're going to try to fix a 
them up with air pressure, wedge, and thicker tires. Dave Burton? Air pressure for the two of Elliott Sadler as well. Full of Sunoco fuel for tire change. Duck. Right lower corner, Brad Keselowski, leader, wanted four tires. He called for four towers and a power raise, and I'm thirsty. Oh, by the way, he topped it off with Sunoco fuel, and he's a rocket off pit road. The 22 car looks like he beat everybody off, but it was close. It was close, Doc, to that scoring line. But Kozlowski will hold the lead on the exchange of pit stops. Two-tire stop for Stephen Wallace. He's going to get him up into the top five off of pit road. Caution for debris on the high side of turn number three. Look at that at the scoring line. Land rush to the end of Charlotte's pit lane. Where winners are celebrated, champions are crowned, and legends are born. Home of the biggest events in motorsports, ESPN and ABC. Charlotte Motor Speedway, where the NASCAR Nationwide Series is down to its final four races of the season. Tonight, 300 miles on this very fast mile-and-a-half track, and we're under caution for the third time. Little strategy played under this yellow by the 66. Stephen Wallace moved up from 19th to 5th after this stop. Watch front tire changer Mark Hollywood Armstrong. Let's see how it works. <laughs> Come on, boy! Come on! Yeah! Yeah! Woo! Get you some of that! Like his intensity. You make that two tire change, that front tire changer is in the 15 yard dash, so he's not a hood ornament. So a little track position play here with the 66, and he'll restart on the inside of row three. Brad Keselowski's chosen the outside lane for this restart. And that white Dodge, Paul Menard, in his Chevys to his inside. Then it's Kyle Busch and Joey Logano, Stephen Wallace and Elliott Sadler. Ricky Stenhouse, the championship leader, is in eighth. Squeeze up in front of him. Better not. At 22, still there. We have seen some last laps play out like that from turn four to the finish line at this track. Yeah, 22 actually led that lap at the line. You see just a whisper of smoke coming out of that 22 car off of turn two. To assume you can see a little bit of it right there. It could be hitting the splitter. Obviously, there's nothing wrong with the engine. Look at that baby go. <laughs> no, it's not Me a problem. Remember in practice that we saw live here on ESPN2 at the start of the opening practice yesterday, they had a left rear fender rub on that 22 car, and it was throwing off quite a bit of smoke at that time. I didn't see any contact with Menard there that might have knocked that fender in a little bit. No. We now battle for fifth here. Elliott Sadler was actually the inside of Joey Logano trying to take the fourth spot away. Couldn't hold it down. Trevor Bain now trying to take that spot from him. That right side only tire change for Stephen Wallace not agreeing with his car. He slipped back to 15th. Let me mention also, we saw Reed Sorensen bring out the second caution a little while ago. Third place driver in the championship in the garage, still working on that car. They have gone to work on the carburetor, think they've either gotten a, got a stuck float or got some debris in the carburetor. That's a report from Dave Burns a little bit ago. Ricky Stenhouse still running behind Trevor Bain. Not able to get back by him after he fell behind Trevor in that last green flag run to try to get some trash off the grill. So Ricky versus Trevor like we saw on Countdown, this is a little different version. <laughs> yeah, right now it's Trevor. It's for a point in the championship. Now, Carl Edwards, in that last run of the race, after the extended pit stop before for making repairs, he ran from 26th to 12th before that last caution flag. 
And right there is working on Jason Leffler for the 11th spot in that 30 car. And he's got it. How about that 60, Dave? I checked with the crew chief, Mike Beam, during the caution. I said, so did you get that damage fixed on the right side correctly? He said, perfect. He was kind of tongue-in-cheek there. <laughs> you do what you can at this point after it bangs off the wall like that. But the car was just a little bit free on the last run. They made a wedge adjustment, a four-tire change. And now, as you said, he's made up a lot of ground. Got a lot of ground to still make up. Eighty-seven car of Kevin Conway is on the apron of the racetrack, coasting toward the pit lane, but he's going to make it back in. Eric McClure took his car to the garage under that last caution. Joining Joe Nemechek, Tim Andrews, Scott Riggs, Johnny Chapman, Scott Speed, Eric Darnell, and Jeff Green as out of the race. Now, saw Stephen Wallace jump up to fifth position from 19th with a right side tire only change on that last stop, but since the green flag... He's about falling back to where he was before the strategy play. This may be one of the reasons why right here. Oops, gets right there in the wall. Same place we saw Carl Edwards. Shannon, they reporting any significant damage? We could see his hands are busy inside there. Well, they're just telling him to get back in the groove, to settle down right now. Rear grip has been the major problem for the 66 all day. The changes have actually made it worse. So, guys, I thought, I think they just went for that two-tire change to get that track position and get him up front. All right, Shannon, thanks. So, unfortunately for, for uh, Steven, he's going to end up back about where he was before the strategy play yeah seldom the two tires fix a handling issue and when you're you're fighting a car yeah you'd like to try to get up front maybe and get some cleaner air not have to have so much uh going on around you but uh if you have handling issues you're gonna have to work on the car it's certainly not going to help fix that at all yeah what i would do is I, if with the car's not handling is use the first part of the race to try to work on it get it better put four tires on it give up some track position early and then position yourself later in the race to try to gain track position where you can hold that. You know, you can hold it if the car's handling well. So two things there as you look at the two and the six cars and the blue spoilers on them. That's the race for the lead in tonight's nationwide insurance dash for cash. Highest finishing of the four drivers. Elliott Sadler, the highest running of those four for the 100 grand bonus. And those are the top two in the championship. Let's get an update on Stenhouse Jr. in that six car, Dave. Remember, Alan, he was distracted earlier by debris on the grill and high temperatures, and recently this. Yes, sir, it's, um, it's something with the package tray up underneath the front end, like radiator ductwork or something. Something's loose. Uh, when I get up near uh, the guy in front of me entering the corners, um, it starts flapping real loud. At first, I thought I had a tire coming apart. It sounded the same thing as, as like Chicago, but... Uh, Something's loose. I don't know what it is. Some drivers have greater tolerance for little distractions than others. Uh, Dale Jarrett, can you help us out a little bit? How big a distraction is that, do you think? Yeah, it becomes even bigger distraction when you're trying to win a championship, I promise you. And you hear more things <laughs> as you go through that situation, too. So uh, it's something probably, if it's like that, they're not going to be able to fix here tonight, Andy. They may get some tape on it, but they're going to have to give up some track position to do that. Yeah, it sounds like maybe the bottom piece of the ductwork is a big flat aluminum panel could have come loose the rivets could have worked loose or maybe something came off off the track and hit it knocked it loose and that's what he's feeling one thing that'll do if it keeps if it gets worse it'll it'll hurt the cooling too you'll see that on his water temp so for now stenhouse jr in seventh position just a couple of spots behind his rival for the title elliot sapper brad kislowski out in front tonight here at charlotte i got a few Afternoon. Got a couple of great games you can choose from on ABC or ESPN in college football. You can either see the Big 12 showdown with the Texas Longhorns hosting the sixth-ranked Oklahoma State Cowboys or the Ohio State Buckeyes on the road to take on the undefeating Fighting Illini. College football presented by Buffalo Wild Wings tomorrow, 3.30 Eastern, 12.30 Pacific. Both games available nationally on either ABC or ESPN.
Texas will need at least 40 to keep up with Oklahoma State on what we've seen so far. Scoreboard operator going to be worn out after that one? Yes, sir. Brad Keselowski wearing out the competition in recent weeks. You like that turn? Uh, in the NASCAR <laughs> Nationwide Series. Got a lead over Paul Menard and Kyle Busch of about a second and a half. Like Joey Logano is running fourth. And Trevor Bain is running fifth. We go up to speed with Nationwide Insurance. Talk about some of the Nationwide Championship eligible drivers. How about Bain, Shannon? Well, they have been working on this car the entire race, Alan. Trevor's just saying it's not into the track. So they've been coming down pit road, making air pressure adjustments, wedge adjustments, just trying to get it hooked up. Remember, this is the team that won here in May. Big shoes to fill for Trevor Bain, and it's all about a win. Dave? Ricky Stenhouse is in the sixth position at this point in the race, and Mike Kelly is crew chief. Well, he knows the rest of the season is about risk versus reward. You bet they'd like to win again before the season is over, but they've got just a few races left to win the championship, and they're ahead of that guy behind him in the two. So go fast, but don't take any unnecessary risks. As for the two, well, they've got to be good. And yesterday in practice, they had a good practice, but it started at the shop. The crew chief, uh, Ernie Cope, told me they unloaded right when they got here. They circled around a little bit, came right back to what they had when they started, and that's how you get a car good starting at the shop. Mike? Dave, Brian Scott rolled off eighth, and he's been in and around that position most of the night. Right now, tenth. Had an interesting practice. He was on the splitter the entire session. That was the concern coming in. They made the right adjustments. That hasn't been an issue. Instead, it's been something else. He's had a weird sensation with the right rear tire. He describes it as squishy. They made an air pressure adjustment. It has corrected it for the time being, Doc. Sam Hornish has won about everything you can win in an IndyCar. Three titles at Indianapolis 500. Then came the stock car racing, hoping to make a statement. Well, tonight, he says, is the night they make that statement. A brand new Penske Dodge, just like the one that 22 has for Brad Keselowski. Whoa, got his hands full there. Sam says the car is a top five finishing car. Right now, tight in the middle and loose off. He saw a minute ago. He's running back in 11th spot. Shannon. Well, Jason Leffler is usually in the 38 car, but for eight events in 2011, he's driving the 30. Casey Kane, of course, in the 38 this week. The car has been tight and has progressively gotten worse as the race has gone on. He told me before he climbed in the car, their biggest issue this weekend has just been getting the car to turn. They've been working on it with air pressure. 31 of Justin Allgaier, also a Turner Motorsports car. He started 10th tonight. He played that two-tire strategy early on, moved all the way up to second, but the car has been tight ever since. He just radioed in and said, quote, plowing tight. So certainly some changes coming up. Mike? Shannon, early on in the race, Eric Almarola radioed in with some interesting comments. He said the engine doesn't feel right, doesn't feel like it's breathing properly. Later in the race, he said, well, I can beat cars in the corner, but not on the straightaway. It seems like it's a horsepower issue right now for the 88, although they are holding their own 15th on the grid right now, Alan. All right, that's Eric Almarola, Mike, uh, running now in that number 15 position. Behind him in 16th, Josh Wise. The crash on the second of his qualifying laps had to start at the back of the field and has moved his way nicely up through the pack to run in 16th position. A moment ago, as we were getting into the up to speed, you caught a glimpse of Kyle Busch passing Paul Menard for that second place, and we're finding out that indeed this 18 car is best on the long run. Yeah, it looks like his car really comes on after they've run about 15, 20, 25 laps. Seems like the longer they run, the faster his car gets. Long green flag run to end the race. Watch out for him. Short one like a green white checker. Well, maybe not so much. He's got a second and seven tenths to catch Brad Keselowski of ground worth to make up. 22 car out in front again tonight here in Charlotte, leading the most laps so far, seeking back-to-back -back wins of the NASCAR Nationwide Series and trying to make it three of the last four. Time for our five-hour energy rapid recap with Rusty and Brad from the pit studio. Go, big fella. Yeah, Carl Edwards gets into the wall early, but he's bounced back. He's back up to eighth position after scraping the wall with that right rear. Take a look at Ricky Stenhouse, our points that are on a restart right here to kind of get going, gets bogged down a little bit. They start passing them on the inside. Takes them about a lap to get that baby wound up. And What's he had he a little trash going? on the grill here, right? Yeah, he did. Once he got going, though, he was really, really fast. You can see him running down Carl Edwards here, teammate, trying to get around him. Ricky's been good, though, all night long. And then Elliot Sandler. Uh, yeah, he just loses a little bit off off turn four. Bunt gets in a wall just a little bit, very little. Then debris. we got a lot of debris all over the track right here. 
three or four guys hit it. No harm, no foul. They keep on going. Paul Menard from the pole, though, baby. He and Ricky Stenhouse take the green flag. They charge off that in the uh, turn one. These guys end up, Paul Menard ends up leading about 26 laps. Yeah, yeah I tell you, Paul Menard's been good all night long. Currently running third, looking good. And back to live action with Ricky Stenhouse Jr. Picking up a spot on Trevor Bain. And right now, Stenhouse Jr. out in front of Elliott Sattler for both championship ground, Rusty and Brad. And that $100,000 nationwide insurance dash for cash bonus tonight. Guys are doing a great job. And uh, Rusty and I just want to let you guys know that that was the five-hour energy rapid recap. <laughs> and we also know these guys are driving like they want that hundred grand, right? I want them to get it. I need a loan. <laughs> Driver's never been motivated by money, has he, Rusty? <laughs> well, I mean, uh, Brad's motivated. He's Absolutely. doing pretty good down here. He's been counting up that money already, but That's we're right. really impressed what Ricky Stenhouse is doing. I mean, we talked earlier in the show, guys. He's running fifth right now. Can't seem to rattle this guy. Elliot Sadler can't. And I'll tell you what, unless something happens to Stenhouse, it's going to be hard for Sadler to get around him right now. They're within 24 points of each other, and it's been staying that way week after week, guys. This six has got to make a mistake. For Elliot to catch him. I agree 100%. And uh, just a remarkable year by this young man. Doing a great job. Obviously has great tools, great equipment, great resources, and he's taking advantage of it. He's running really stout right now, A.B. So Stenhouse Jr. running in fifth, Sadler running in eighth, and talk about, you know, Sadler needing Stenhouse Jr. to make a mistake to try and close up in the championship. Well, that's kind of not how Elliott really wants to see it play out. Well, what he needs to do is put a little pressure on him. Elliott tells us just that. You know, I don't know if Ricky's going to make a mistake. You know, he's he's the real deal. I mean, he, he's definitely a really good race car driver, and he, he's got a really good race team built around him. Um, we have to go do our job. We can't wait for him to do whatever he's going to do. And, and, and Kevin Harvick said it best to me, is we have to do what we're supposed to do as a race team. We have to run how we're capable of running. If we don't do our jobs, it doesn't really matter what, what the six car does. You were saying? Yeah, put a little pressure on it. <laughs> like you know, he's got to run better. He's got to run. He's got to run faster than this six. And that's what will put the most pressure on. He can put himself up front and, and and make Ricky have to chase him. He's not doing that right no, now. No, he's not. You know, when he Carl Edwards there is past Elliot Sadler, but yeah, I, I'm very impressed with Ricky Stenhouse. I mean, just over a year ago, this young man was looking at not having a ride, and here he is getting ready to win the nationwide championship if he does everything right for this three and a half races that he has left right now. We're sure he was going to make it. He even got sat out for a couple of races by Jack Roush, but sure has rallied and sure has shown he's fast and can get it done. Kyle Busch running second in the 18 car, trying to close in on Brad Keselowski for the race lead, tracking Kyle's progress through the day. Mike? Alan, as we documented at the top of the show, Kyle Busch has been uh, rather good here at the Charlotte Motor Speedway. Six victories in the Nationwide Series. The only other driver with six in the history is Mark Martin. Suffice to say, Busch not accustomed to running second and not ready to settle for it tonight either. I think anybody's scratching their head wondering why I can't get to 22 considering this is my best track. I've won the most races here. Just saying. I know, man. You can give them all the facts you want. Sometimes they still don't get it. Crew Chief Jason Radcliffe trying to put his mind at ease. Remember, there are 85 laps left. Lots of time to tune on this race car. Right now, Kyle saying it's just a little bit snug. As long as there have been multiple brands of cars competing in NASCAR racing, there have been speculation that the other brands getting a break from the rule makers that we're not getting. And that's kind of what that sounded like to me, uh, an opinion on part of Kyle Busch and his team driving Toyotas, that perhaps they're at a disadvantage somehow to the make that they're chasing at the moment, which is Brad Keselowski in a Dodge. And by the way, these Fords have not been too shabby either. Roush Fenway, guys. Oh, and Carl Edwards, I can tell you, I'm surprised to see this race car coming back as good as what it is. I, I told you guys during the break a while ago he wouldn't be a factor, but marching forward. Reconsidering? No, not yet. <laughs> Edwards off to sixth position. Pit stops coming up soon here at Charlotte. We have flown past the midway point of tonight's Dollar General 300 for the NASCAR Nationwide Series. Charlotte Motor Speedway. 
with Brad Keselowski leading the most laps so far in this race. And a long green run, the longest green run of the night, getting us ready for what should be a round of green flag pit stops very shortly. That's the gap, first to second. Keselowski in the white Dodge to Kyle Busch in the orange and black Toyota. Nine tenths of a second. A gap that Kyle has closed toward the end of this long run. He's about double that behind. He's made a nice charge whenever, uh, as Brad Kazas has got into some traffic here. Green flag pit stop, saw Sam Hornish in a minute ago. Now Casey Kane is in. And Allen, he couldn't wait to get here. They got to make some more major changes on the 38 because he is just killing the splitter. That's the kind of thing that you work on early in practice, it seems like. And they have uh, just tried to find this car all night long, and they still haven't got it. Allen? I hate it when I lose my race car. Uh, this car hadn't been good all day. I mean, it's just when you got Casey Kane in, the, in that car in Charlotte and running like they run, they've got some real issues. Yeah, and talked to Casey yesterday as they finished up practice, and he seemed a little perplexed at why they couldn't change that race car. And it seems like what they've been fighting the entire time they've been here. Yeah, the other thing that's happened in this long run is Brad Kozlowski has put a lot of guys a lap down. Michael Annette, Kenny Wallace, Mike Bliss, Stephen Wallace, Ryan Truex, all caught and lapped by the race leader here in this last run of the race. There's two guys with fresher tires on right there side by side. Hornish on pit road a few laps earlier than Kane. Paul Menard to pit road, Stephen Wallace in. Shannon? And remember, Stephen Wallace was one of the guys who took two tires. They're going to come down. Tight is the message. It will not turn. It's going to be a four-tire change this stop. Doc. Four tires for pole center and early leader trouble. Paul Menard. Penard car down. Caution's off down the racetrack. Yeah. Nice trouble in turn two. One car up into the wall. That is Get Ryan Truex. Get a wall down if you need to. You okay? Yeah. Clear to turn down. Clear to turn down, Ryan. Looks like that right front tire went down. Just right there at the end of this green flag stretch. Running 18th at the time. So he's already into the fence. Well, we have a camera on board this 99 car. We're in the wall, guys. We're in the wall. You're clear to come down, man. Clear to come down. Hold what you got. Hold it. Only thing that lessened that a little bit was he was running that higher line and didn't have as far to go to hit the wall, but that's still a solid lick, but it's okay. So one of the drivers eligible for the $100,000 nationwide insurance dash for cash bonus. Done for the night. like a piece of a brake rotor maybe off that 99 car after he hit the wall and watch the race leader oh that's some big heavy heavy metal parts there good thing he's coming in for tires and he's still dragging it for a while yeah that's well, a piece of something suspension well there's no telling there's a lot of a lot of those parts come loose when you hit the wall as hard as he did there's somebody oh, it's like maybe timmy hill got it there that is a brake rotor, Alan. Yes. And I wouldn't advise picking that up without gloves. That's or a shovel. smarter. Yeah, there we go. Brad Kozlowski down on the apron, getting to the end of that fuel tank in that 22 while leading the race. And got to keep up with the pace car to hold his position on the track. Get down on the apron so the fuel doesn't slosh away from the pickup inside that fuel tank. And they'll come to the pit lane with 71 laps to go. Mike. And Jason Ratcliffe, the crew chief for Kyle Busch, looking for something that might help them equalize the battle between them and the 22. Hoping that four sticker tires will do that. No other adjustments to this race car, Shin. Joey Logano was the fastest car in the racetrack, those closing laps. Just a little bit loose. They're going to make a four tire change and air pressure. Dave. Ricky Stenhouse was fourth when the caution came out. Freer on the top, tick tight from the center off. Air pressure adjustment. Doc. 
Brad Keselowski, four tires and wait on the fuel. Pack it full of fuel. Wait, wait, wait. Now go. There goes the 18 by. Here comes the 20. Brad K, second off of pit road, guys. Like maybe they were a little slow getting away from the right rear on that 22 car. Just a little bit. But that 18 pit crew has been on They've it. Been on it. Yeah, they have. So caution after green flag pit stops have begun. That will see some wave arounds before the restart. Fourth caution of tonight's NASCAR Nationwide Series race at Charlotte Motor Speedway. Be sure to go to NASCAR.com for all your latest NASCAR information. Just over 100 miles to go in this one. And the leader after the exchange of pit stops is now Kyle Busch after Brad Keselowski led the biggest chunk of this race so far. That exchange of leads happened on pit road. Yeah, we'll look at the pit stop for Brad Keselowski. See if they were slow somewhere. Looks like the right rear just a little behind. Yeah, they had to wait on that right rear. Where Doc saying they wanted to pack this fuel cell full of fuel. Just a little bit slower. Kyle Busch's crew, they've been on it all night long. This is a, they, again, had the fastest four-tire stop on pit road. And as soon as Keselowski left pit road from that stop with 71 laps to go, he heard this. Save me fuel. Save me fuel. Brad, we're, uh... We're in that situation, we're a handful short, and uh, the left rear's got a little tuck under there, it, it rubs that tire, it looks the same as the last time. I yield to us with some hope, but it's just a rubber on the shoulder. Alright, so, one, that explains the smoke we did see uh, last time uh, from this 22 car, and two, here we go again! Yeah, here we go again. <laughs> they do get good fuel mileage, this team does. So they may be one of the very few teams that could possibly stretch it. Doc, what are they saying? They think they got enough? Well, remember what happened last week. Brad Keselowski was actually leading the race and shutting the car completely off during the nationwide race, entering the corners. He is one of the best. He works at it. He learns it. He works at it. And he's very good at doing it here in the nationwide car. They think down here they're four or five laps shy. And, DJ, I'm wondering, uh, as a driver, think you can save that much over the length of a fuel run? Boy, Doc, that's asking a lot right there. But uh, we've seen Brad Keselowski be able to do a fantastic job in doing that. So we'll have to see as uh, this plays out. But that, that's saving a lot of fuel right there. Going to get another lap of caution to get the restart order straight. Had a pile of wave around cars. Only one of them getting back on the lead lap. That's Paul Menard who gets back on the lead lap. Remember, he pitted under the green just before the caution came out. A little over a lap to go before the restart. Want to try our in-race reporter? Hey, Ricky, Dale Jarrett, you have a copy? Yeah, go ahead, Dale. Hey, man, looks like you got a pretty solid race car, but uh, possibly the restarts have been a little bit of a problem tonight. They have. That's uh, something I've been working on all year. I feel like the mile and a half, we had it pretty good, but uh, tonight it seems like it's easy to spin these tires at Charlotte. So I've been doing something different every time, see if I can get it figured out. The last one wasn't terrible, so uh, see if we can't get something here going. All right, man, got another one coming up. Good luck. Thanks. So doubled up for the restart with Stenhouse. Let me just throw these numbers at you. The last two times here, we have seen some strategy play into the finish of this race. Last pit stop for Brad Keselowski. This race a year ago when he won lap 144. He had to get away from Mark Truex Jr. on three late restarts to hold the win, but that was the last time he pitted. In the May race here, Carl Edwards last pitted at lap one. Uh, let's see, Matt Kenseth, rather, last pitted at lap 150. Carl Edwards stayed out on that caution and pitted just prior to that and had enough fuel to make the finish. These guys all stopped at lap 130, 128, Andy. <laughs> yeah, they'll have to stretch it a little bit here. We'll see just how much they can. What about Kyle Busch's status there, Mike? Well, Alan, before the race, uh, Jason Radcliffe estimated they could go between 55, maybe 60 laps at the max on fuel. Well, their fuel calculations, based upon what they've seen so far tonight, come up just a little bit shy. They tell me they're probably 10 to 8 laps short at the moment. So we're going to have to wait and see. It sounds like they're a lot shorter than Brad Keselowski's team, but now they've added another lap of caution, and this is all helping that 22 car. They're saving fuel, running around here with the engine shut off about half the time. Kyle Busch probably is, too. Yeah, but he was said he was almost 10 laps short, and we think that maybe Brad is only five laps short. Yeah, that's a lot more manageable, especially these two caution laps that have been added, certainly helping 
in that respect. Ten laps is out of the question. Yeah, I don't. That's to not going to that. happen. And by the way, Carl Edwards is up there in the top five as well. Oh yeah, he's good at it too. <laughs> Uh, what are they saying in that 22 pit, Doc? Well, let's add to ask Todd Gordon. Todd, I heard you telling me you're a handful or so short. They've added another lap. That's got to help you. How close are you, and can your guy make it? I, I don't think so. Uh, we're, we're about five short. I think, you know, I think that's about where everybody is. Everybody runs this place just about wide open. Uh, I think we all use the same amount of fuel. So um, about five laps short, but you never know what happens with long cautions. If there's a wreck, take some time to clean up. We'll... Uh, We'll see where the hand plays out from there, but just try to make yourself prepared for it. Okay, Todd Gordon. Remember, guys, this guy's not, not trying to win a championship in the owners or in drivers, so he can afford to gamble if they wanted to. Should be exciting. Alan? All right, Doc, hey. thanks. 65 laps to go, and I'll just put that in perspective about Todd Gordon saying if we get some cautions and so on, track position versus tires obviously he's voting with track position yeah right now and he's just gonna play his hand he, he just wants to make sure that if things in the cir uh, circumstance works out that they have not wasted any fuel that they might need if, if we do get a long caution they're still playing i think they're still planning on making another pit stop kyle bush the leader in the 18 black and orange brad Kislowski in a white dodge logano edwards stenhouse scott sadler green flag Cars going everywhere in turn two there. Got them three wide for the lead, too. Joey Logano down low. Making a charge. Stenhouse coming with him. Remember, Kyle Busch's car has had trouble getting going. But it's been terrific on the longer runs. Boy, Stenhouse got a whole lot better restart that time. Look at the sparks fly out of that six car. Yeah, it looked like he still spun the tires a little bit, but man, once he got it in high gear, he's off to the races now. So the picture at the front of the pack shuffles already. Keselowski back to the point. Now Kyle Busch back to fourth. Here's Elliott Sattler in the two, trying to get a spot on Carl Edwards in the 60. Quietly sneaking into the picture, that pink car, Brian Vickers in the 32. After some people got shuffled off the lead lap in that long last run, and Brad Keselowski put so many guys a lap down. Elliott Sadler, hang on to that Boy, two he, car. He's wheeling that thing right there now. And it's like Paul struggling with his race car here a little bit. Now maybe he's saving fuel thinking he might be able to get to the end. How about uh, Vickers in that 32 car, Doc? Remember, Alan, only the second time he's ever driven the new edition of this nationwide car. First time was last week at Kansas. He told me he learned a lot about only having one set of tires to practice on. This car has been tight in the middle, loose in and loose off. They made a major track bar in air pressure judgment last time. It apparently has helped him as he's now trying to move on the inside of Carl Edwards. Yeah, that car wasn't very good back there in the middle part of this race. Uh, I watched Brian sometimes really was struggling through the corners, but it looked like those adjustments have helped tremendously. Second place, Elliott Sadler. Check that, that's fourth place. He's tried this one other time and getting on the inside of Joey Logano wasn't able to make it work and actually lost a couple of spots when he was trying to do that. So he's not able to complete the pass once again. Two, top two got away so far from these guys already. <laughs> Lost sight of them. Yeah, they are out there in another area code for the moment. Stenhouse not losing sight of Frank Kazowski up there in front. But great battle here. Looks like Carl's car has come back to life a little bit. Yep. Jason Sattler there for fifth and sixth. By the way, the car we saw shoot up the banking a little while ago, Charles Lewandowski, that being pushed back to the garage area after he brought it, brought it back around to pit road. Here's an unscheduled stop for Paul Menard in the 33. What happened, Doc? 
He's got a vibration, shaking, shimmering, apparently has a loose wheel coming down. So the pole sitter, an early leader, who pitted it just as the caution came out a moment ago, and they were hustling to get him back off of pit road because the yellow was waving. Now they're going to change all four tires to try to figure out which one was loose. Tough race for Paul Menard, his final nationwide race of the year. Going to lose at least one lap with that stop. So, Edwards falling back in behind Sadler for the moment in that race for fifth and sixth. But look at the gap already that's been put on the field by leader Brad Keselowski. 57 laps to go here at Charlotte Motor Speedway. After we finish up tonight here at Charlotte Motor Speedway, we turn our attention to the NASCAR Sprint Cup Series. NASCAR now getting you ready for tomorrow night's big race, 10 a.m. Eastern, ESPN2. The big race is the Bank of America 500, race five in the chase for the Sprint Cup, ABC 7 Eastern Time. NHRA season winding down to its final few events. The Arizona Nationals qualifying late night Saturday night and the final Sunday on ESPN2. And the final event of the season for the Eyes on IndyCar Series, the World Championship, ABC Sunday 3 Eastern presented by Sunoco. Full weekend of motorsports on the ESPN networks. Pretty hard racing with Carl Edwards and Elliott Sadler for fifth and sixth. Edwards having dropped back a couple of spots in this run since the restart. Now moving forward again. While Brian Vickers slipping back and Elliott Sadler sliding back as well. Yeah, Carl Edwards had actually lost a couple of spots to Vickers and to Trevor Bain, but was able to take those back and now come back and go by Elliott Sadler. He looks like his car may not be to his liking right now. Vickers racing with Trevor Bain and Brian Scott. That would be 7th, 8th, ninth, And racing pretty hard. Yeah, Brian Scott having another good run here at Charlotte. Fun or frustrating when you get in a group like this, lap after lap after lap, and you can't get by them or you can't get clear of them? Uh, frustrating for a while. <laughs> then becomes fun if you can put them in your rearview mirror, but it, it is frustrating, especially with these cars. With the We talk about the lesser horsepower that they have, and you, know, you do everything that you possibly can, and you just can't shake them. And, just have to, to keep patient, keep working, and hopefully uh, you'll win over that. Caution brought out a little while ago, and Ryan Truex ended up in the wall in turn number one. Dave's caught up with him. Yeah, we're back in the garage now, Alan. Ryan, uh, the night wasn't going great. It didn't look like to begin with. What happened ultimately? We blew a tire. Um, no warning, no nothing, just popped. But I really hate it for these guys. They work so hard to get this car here, and... Uh, Right off the bat in the race, we had something going on with the motor. Uh, pushing water, running really hot, and had no power. I don't know if we broke a valve spring or what, but we just couldn't get off the corner. Couldn't run with anyone, so I hate it for these guys. You know, nothing you can do now. Just kind of sucks that we're here. Big effort to give them a chance tonight, but didn't quite turn out, Alan. So Ryan Truex, one of the drivers in the hunt for that $100,000 bonus, not going to win it tonight. Brian Scott slipping back out of that group he was racing with in the 11, and Eric Almarola in the 88 going to run up and race him. Two old friends here. They have been the subject of um, discussion after a couple of run-ins on the racetrack, culminating in some rather harsh words on television at the end of the race at Kansas last Saturday. Saw him after qualifying, or after each one of them had qualified speak to each other then saying that they were going to try to talk before the race started see how that talk went here well before we find out Al Almarola's got to catch him Scott got away a couple car lengths on that lap that is 10th and 11th positions well behind leader Brad Keselowski he's got an 8 tenths of a second lead on Ricky Stenhouse Jr. Kyle Busch closing in third as the laps wind on 45 to go at Charlotte Motor Speedway.
ESPN College Football Saturday at noon. The 11th ranked Michigan Wolverines take on Big Ten and Cross State rival Michigan State. Then it's an SEC showdown at 7. The Florida Gators and the Auburn Tigers. 10-15 Eastern. Wrap the day with Arizona State and the number 9 Oregon Ducks. College Football. ESPN and ESPN3 tomorrow. And streaming live on the WatchESPN.com and the Watch ESPN app. And he's probably got it on his iPad right in front of him. Yeah, but I'm busy right now. No. Yes, we are. <laughs> People watching us on the iPad. Brad Kozlowski leading Kyle Busch by half of what he was leading him by before. Nine-tenths of a second versus the 1.8, Doc. And remember, they had told uh, Brad K to start saving fuel as soon as he left pit road and said, save us some fuel. Now, we also talked to the crew chief who said, we're five laps short, probably not going to make it without a stop. Here's what Brad said a moment ago about fuel saving. Uh, still 1 to 10 here, Todd, about a 1 fuel saving. At 4. So he said he's, he's about a 1, which means he's not shutting it off. He's not clutching the car. He's barely rolling out of the throttle. Why? Because what Alan Beswick said, that 18 car is on a tear and is cutting the margin now to about 9 tenths of a second. Mike Massaro. Was indeed on a tear, Doc, but there were some intense moments on the most recent restart. He was battling up in the front of the pack. He had to fend off an aggressive move by his teammate, Joey Logano. Logano there, you see, right on the rear deck of the 18 car as they came to the green flag. Logano then made the move, and, well, let's just say that Kyle was not too happy with his teammate. Logano needs to have a one talking to you. Needless to say, Kyle always expects to be the guy in victory lane when it comes to nationwide races here in Charlotte. His, his uh, spotter, Eddie DeHaan, came over the radio not too long ago and told them, welcome to the party. They know that car has come to life, Alex. Yeah, that move was when they got to the backstretch. Logano ducked three wide to the inside of Kyle and Kislowski. Is that not what he gets paid to do? <laughs> you know, we've seen... That track position phrase again, got, especially right after restart, you've got to get all you can. Oh, yeah, it's just that's the time to do it. It's, you just you have to. Yeah. If you don't, if you're not the aggressor, you're going to be the one that's the victim of it. And uh, I think, like you say, probably the best defense is a good offense. Yeah, we talk about these tapered spacers and how hard it is to get these cars up to speed. You don't want to crack the throttle at all because then you, they just start filing by you. Sixth place, Trevor Bain, 16, Elliott Sadler, 2. Trevor Bain saying had big shoes to fill coming into this weekend. Matt Kenseth won the race here in May in that 16 car. Bain having a solid run right now. What about Sadler's two car, Dave? Right there is where Elliott Sadler, actually it was just before that where he's having trouble mostly. Too tight in the center of the corner. That's one of the reasons why Bain was able to get the 16 car in there and complete that pass. Shannon? Well, Trevor Bain spent practice yesterday working on getting through those turns, and that has been the trouble point for him during this race. The car has just been tight all day. Now, Bain says his number one priority, guys, is getting a win, but he also wants to do anything he can to help out the 60 and the 6, of course, going for the owner's championship and the driver's championship. Alan? Shannon, thanks. 32 laps to go. Trevor Bain running sixth, Elliott Sadler seventh, Ricky Stenhouse Jr. third, leading both the way in the championship and the nationwide insurance dash for cash tonight. Brad Keselowski leading the race overall. Kyle Busch chipping away and chipping away at the lead that 22 has. Back live, Charlotte Motor Speedway in the closing laps of tonight's NASCAR Nationwide Series race. The man who's dominated much of the night is no longer the race leader. We are under caution for the fifth time. Brad Keselowski with his hands full off of turn number two. He's got a right rear tire going down. Whoa! Kyle Busch. Now he almost clobbered at 22. Then Brad spun onto the apron of turn four to bring out the caution. Here come the leaders to pit road with 27 to go. Mike? And Kyle told Jason Ratcliffe not really to change a thing. They're just looking for four tires, fuel, and a tear-off. This crew has been very fast all afternoon. And again, another quick stop, Ken. Joey Logano says if you fix the center, we might have a shot at this thing. They're missing a four-tire change. Air pressure for the 20. Dave. Ricky Stenhouse takes two tires. He's gone. Elliott Sadler, two 
two tires also out of here. The 60 of Carl Edwards for tire change. And a near collision there as Brian Vickers was leaving his pits as Brad Keselowski was just getting that 22 car to his pit stall. Well, that changes that picture. Uh-huh, the race is on. And how, first of all, how close Brad Keselowski and Kyle Busch came to reckon together while Brad was trying to save that 22 car. Hey, Kyle, he's wide open. Oh, hey. <laughs> wow. Hey. There's a go. Look now that's this. a close call right there. That's two, that's two guys, actually. Kyle Busch's talent kept him from crashing right there. So Brad gets down the other end of the racetrack. He's slowing. He's on the apron. He's looking to come to pit road. He and fights it all the way, all the way to the entrance. And just can't hold on to it any longer. And the caution comes out. That happened to be the caution he needed. It happened to be. So uh, that puts Brad, last car on the lead lap, in 13th place instead of leading. Yeah, but by staying out there, being able to stay out there, he'll be able to start in 13th, not to tail in the longest line. You got it. Well, going to be an interesting finish to this one. Don't go away. Back to the restart in a minute. Half a lap from the restart. At Charlotte Motor Speedway, Brad Keselowski back in 13th place. This on his radio. Really sorry about that, guys. Ain't nothing you can do about a puncture. Uh, that tire had a puncture right in the center of the contact patch. Uh, nothing you can do. Awesome save to get it here. We still got something to race with. Dr. Jerry Punch, our demonstrator on pit road. Thank you, Doc. So, Keselowski going to be 13th on the restart. Uh, Stenhouse Jr., Sadler, and Vickers, right side tires only on the pit stop. Kyle Busch, off pit road, first with four fresh tires. He's fourth. Edwards, Logano, fifth and sixth, 24 laps to go. How's this one going to turn out? Let's find out. Bottleneck, Elliot Sadler nosing out in front of Stenhouse. Lot on the line here, the $100,000 points. Got it all right there in front. Three wide right behind him. And Brad Kozlowski bottled up in the middle of that as cars wobble back and forth in the traffic. Kyle Bush to second around Stenhouse. Earlier in the race, we saw the six and the two get two tires. They were able to get out and get a lead and keep it for a while. Kyle Busch having none of that here now. To the point with 22 laps to go. Important, Elliott Sadler did lead a lap. Got a bonus point toward the championship. They all count. Stenhouse did lead earlier tonight. That's the way to show who the force is right there. So that balanced out that. And that was Kyle Busch's spotter, Eddie DeHaan. Second place, and for the lead in the $100,000 bonus class, Stenhouse to the inside of Sadler, 6-2. and two. Yeah, There's a couple of fans sitting down there on pit road, too, that are pretty excited about this battle right now. They have that opportunity to win $100,000. Also, see Stenhouse oh, sliding that car. Off contact the here down the back stretch. And a little wiggle there by the six. Here comes Sattler. It's like Elliott might be able to get up, trying to get up on the right rear. Slow him down a little bit. Yeah, Elliott's car like just not working well on the bottom side of the racetrack. So he's trying to make that middle lane work for him. They're racing and still not letting the 18 get very far away from them here. 
Kenny Wallace took a wave around to get back on the lead lap at that caution, but he's in 16th place. Ryan Truex, the other oh, car on the wall, Casey Kane. Wow, he's got a lot of damage on that car. Yeah, it could be some debris here. No caution yet. They're I'm looking. Surprised. I'll be surprised it didn't bring out one. Wow. Yeah, you can see it. Well, maybe it's just paint, but it looks like a lot of debris up there. So Stenhouse getting away from Sadler for second. Dale mentioned fans before. Four fans paired with each of the four Dash for Cash drivers. A fan is going to win $100,000 tonight, depending on which one of those guys they're paired with. Brad Keselowski, 22, restarted 13th. That traffic was three wide in front of him for the first couple laps after that restart, and he kind of had to be very patient before it thinned out and he could start to go. Yeah, just nowhere that you can go whenever it gets like that, and uh, he's back in dirtier air. Trevor Bain here trying to take this spot. Fourth, great battle with Joey Logano. And looking ahead at that from Carl Edwards' car there for a moment. Yeah, Carl's car, even with the damage, it, it does good on a long run, but he just doesn't have the speed that you would normally see out of this 60 car after on a restart. See when Logano pulled down in front of Bain in that corner, how Trevor lost the nose of that 16 and it sent him right up the racetrack. Yeah, I'm like you, Dale. I think that Carl knocked a couple of tenths of a second out of that car when he hit that wall off turn four early. He's not able to find it. Keslowski, ninth, trying to get eighth from Brian Scott. Caution. Caution is out. All right, take a break. Debris turned four from the Casey Kane bouncing off the wall. You can see a lot from that, you know, that contact. Looked like it, uh, if it was maybe paint off the wall, but could have been some other parts off of that car. It seemed like there was a lot of stuff flying around when he hit that wall. Sixth caution of the race erases Kyle Busch's one second lead and I was just about to say Brad Kozlowski needs a caution to have a shot <laughs> well here it is <laughs> he's he needs at one. least that yeah but he, he was gonna have to definitely have that yeah and he still got his work cut out for him yes not many laps to go we're starting still starting ninth because catching him's one thing yeah and passing him's another yeah that's for sure but it will give Ricky Stenhouse the opportunity to be up here on the front row with Kyle Busch. Ricky get, struggled on the, the restarts, though, a little bit. See if he can get it right on this next one. I was going to say last. It may not be the last. Yeah, I wouldn't go yeah. there. Gives uh, Elliot Sadler another shot. Trying to get by Stenhouse for the $100,000 bonus. And gives a lot of drivers a chance to have a good night turn bad if this gets a little too... <laughs> yeah, there's an opportunity for that, too. Too rambunctious in the final laps. I don't expect we'll see any of these front runners pit here with 15 nope. to go. Can't give up that track position this late. Well, Ricky Stenhouse Jr. is our in-race reporter. There are some pit stops under this caution, but none of the front runners are in. So let's see if we can talk to Ricky for just a minute. Hey, Ricky, Dale Jarrett, you got us? Yes, sir, Dale, I got you. All right, man, a great run here tonight, and uh, you've talked about a young man like yourself battling for a championship. You look like you're more interested in getting this trophy and $100,000 here tonight. That would be nice, but uh, you know what? For Lucky for us, you know, we're battling Elliott for the Dash for Cash and the uh, championship, so uh, it'd be good to uh, get both of them tonight, that's for sure. All right, looks like the restart's a little bit better. Do you have enough to beat this 18 car here on this next one? Man, that's tough. He, you know, I don't, I don't know how much he's playing around there, uh, just saving his tires. But, um, you know, I think uh, if we can get a good restart here and stick to the outside of him, you know, that's probably our only shot. Okay, Rick. Thanks for talking with us. Good luck, man. Thank you. All right, so three of the cars that took the wave around at that last yellow to get back on the lead lap did just pit under this caution. That'd be Paul Menard, Kenny Wallace, and Stephen Wallace. Uh, Josh Wise also pitting under the yellow. Josh had gotten the uh, free pass at the last caution, so chance to get fresh tires and uh, 
fuel to finish for those cars. But up front, it is Kyle Busch who now has to try and get away from the pack again on another restart, Mike. Uh, that's the case, indeed. Catching up with his crew chief now, Jason Ratcliffe. You're out front. You've got clean air, but you've got some pretty strong race cars behind you. What are your thoughts right now? I tell you what, man. It's a tough crowd out there tonight. It's uh, And the race starts are crazy. You know, these guys are out there just running wide open. So we've, saw, we've seen a lot of big bowl moves tonight. Hopefully we don't uh, see too many of those here to the, to the coming laps at the end, end of this thing. But uh, I'm really proud of these guys. It's Toyota Z-Line Designs. Toyota Camry has been awesome. The mile and a half tracks have not been our strong suit this year. We've done okay. I'm not. I'm not complaining. But we need to be better. So I'm. I'm really proud of everybody. At Joe Gibbs Racing and all these guys. They've been working, working really hard to make our mile and a half program better. And they. And they've done a good job. We're getting close. Close uh, indeed, and certainly in contention to win this one, Dave. With Ernie Cope, crew chief for Elliott Sadler, how much more has he got? Can he get back around that six car? I don't know. He says it feels like the left front spring collapsed on him, and it's when he goes in hard, it's kind of bouncing off the racetrack. So it's good once we uh, he kind of backs the corner up a little bit, but right now it's time to go, and it's like he drives in there hard, just kind of bounce off that spring. We'll see if he can handle that, Alan. Here they come to green. It'll be with 12 laps to go, Dave. So on the front row, Kyle Busch has chosen the outside lane. Stenhouse to his inside. You look back through, Brad Kozlowski, five rows back. 12 laps to go, how's it turn out? Stenhouse has trouble getting going. Bottled up in that inside lane, Kyle Busch to the lead. Well, Stenhouse, Stenhouse gets it in high gear, he's able to go, but he was spun the tires once again. Kind of bottled things up, but he's got the power to it now. Joey Logano to the outside of Stenhouse for second place. Elliott Sadler shuffled back a couple of spots. Carl Edwards moving to the outside. And keeping an eye on that white and black dodge to see if Kozlowski can make any progress. Not much. I tell you, Stenhouse had to check up a little bit in one and two. Looks like Elliott Sadler's getting a run on the outside. Remember that's for that's, 100 grand. Yep, that's for the bonus. Sadler clear as we come to 10 laps to go. Yeah, look at Carl Edwards. His car is all banged up. Fighting for second. Well, Stenhouse really struggling with that six car right now, too. He just can't seem to get uh, any grip to the back of that car at all. Here goes Edwards on Joey Logano for second. Did you say second? Yeah. <laughs> Carl got a little bit loose there. Here comes his teammate, Trevor Bain, right to his bumper. And Carl Edwards just so good at recovering from having, you know, any, like a bad car or a mistake or a penalty. He can come back so well. I mean, he just never gives up. Look at him. Still fighting for second. Outside of Joey Logano, trying to crowd down on that right rear fender and slow Logano down using the air. Trevor Bain in the mix. 16. Oh, oh Logano, hang on to it. That's Into the wall. Caution, Caution is out. Seventh caution of the night with eight laps to go. Bad. Kyle Busch is now going to have to deal with three Roush cars in a row. <laughs> oh, my goodness. They're going to team up on him here. Might take all three of them to get him. It might. <laughs> so, Joey Logano running second. Challenge for that spot. Carl Edwards and Trevor Bain off into turn number three, and Logano didn't come out the other side with an intact race car. And that's just how you take the air off of a race car. You get down off the side, you can see and get the left front down on the apron a little bit. That loosens the car up. Just not able to handle it after that. That right there. With the 16 car getting that close to him, that's already loosened the car up. And you can see as he got the left front down. Clear. Clear low. Clear low. 
trying to come back. He's behind. You're all clear. He just wrecked behind you. Yellow is out. 20 wrecked behind you. And here's something else to watch. When Elliot Sadler in the two has to slow to keep from running into Joey Logano in the 20, Ricky Stenhouse in the six goes by him. Then the caution comes out. Yeah. Uh, so that puts him in. Yep. But we got a, another point in the championship. Well, we got another restart. And yep. That six car just hasn't been that good. At least getting going right on the start of the green. That is true. Very true. It's getting a little wild at the finish of this one. Dave, nice rally for Carl Edwards to this point. It sure is. Mike Beam and the guys put the car back together again. And uh, how in the world did he get this fast, Mike? Well, I mean, guys, it, it towed it out, you know, when the crush pounds are out of it. But Carl, you know how he is. He never gives up. These guys don't give up. So, you know. We'll see what we got. I hate to be on the inside here because I feel like we'd be better on the outside. But, you know, um, but like I said, it, we'll see what. I'd, you know, I'm really amazed that we got back like we did. But you know, when you got somebody like Carl Edwards and these guys, you know, they never give up, and it's good fun. You overcame that wrecked race car. Maybe you can overcome the inside lane, Shannon. Chad Norris calling the shots for Trevor Bain, starting third, right behind both of your teammates. I know you guys are focused on just getting a win, but you got owner championship, driver championship. What is your agenda right now? I tell you, uh, Trevor's done a really nice job today with his fast and all Mustang, and uh, we want the Roush one, two, three here tonight. That's what we really want. We want the we want the owners, the drivers, and the manufacturers tonight. That's what we're working really hard towards. And uh, man, I want to get Trevor's first win. It, right. It's going to be a good night. All right, well, good luck, Doc. Well, Todd Gordon's driver, Brad Keselowski, he will restart seventh. He's had the best car all night long. Does he have enough car and enough time to get there? It's all a matter of how we get through this initial start. Bottom line seems to kind of back us up, but uh, Brad's been doing an awesome job. This is going to our Dodge. We'll, uh, we'll see where it happens. The key is the restart, and Brad actually apologized for not getting a good restart last time on. Alan? All right, tidying up details. NASCAR... When they put the caution out and freeze the field, they said at the last scoring loop that the cars crossed before the yellow came out, Elliot Sadler was in front of Ricky Stenhouse still. So that's why Elliot gets the position ahead of Stenhouse for this restart, and that's huge. Well, and that, you know, the video showed that he was in front, but they don't use video for that until the end of the race to, to call the finish. They do go by the scoring loops when the caution comes out before the end of the race. So the last scoring loop they crossed, which could have been back there in the middle of turn three. So Sadler is a spot in front of Stenhouse here. Edwards coming back from 27th place after hitting the wall at lap 32 is to the inside of Kyle Busch who has chosen the outside lane for this restart for five final laps. Mm, this is going to be good if we don't see another caution. Who gets the win? Who gets the $100,000 bonus? How does it affect the championship? Five laps to go. Hold a seat. Can Trevor Bain get that first win, maybe? Three wide. Sam Hornish with a big run. Four wide on the outside in that yellow 12 car. Up front, Edwards to the point, but here comes Kyle Busch. Stenhouse did not get going on the restart. Elliott Sadler in position for the money. Four laps to go. See Brian Scott there in the mix. Another great run for him here tonight. At Stenhouse back there, bottled up in some of the traffic. As Trevor Bain works Elliott Sadler there for third spot. Stenhouse up on the high side trying to make up a few spots here. Able to go by Sam Hornish. Oh, and by the way, here comes Brad Keselowski. I don't think he's close enough to contend for the win, but he can make these last few laps exciting in that group. Can Trevor Bain take that third spot from Elliott Sadler? How about Carl Edwards? I, I, I can't even believe that. He just ran the fastest lap of the race for him, the last lap, and that is the third 
fastest lap that's been run all night long with that car that's tore up. Talk about getting it done behind the wheel. He's got two more to do it, though. He's got Kyle Busch bearing down on him. Yeah, had a big Kyle Busch. Had a big run off of turn two. These two drivers have been the class of the field on many occasions this year. They finished 1-2 on many occasions. Final lap, one to go. Edwards with Kyle Busch bearing down on him. Elliott Sadler in command for the bonus. Busch to the inside. Can he get the lead in the final half lap? Not that corner. One more set of turns. Big run to the bottom, but it's not going to be enough. Carl Edwards is going to have another incredible rally and come all the way back to win tonight at Charlotte. Finishing in fourth and collecting the $100,000 nationwide insurance bonus, Elliott Sadler. Ricky Stenhouse Jr. finishes in ninth position. What a finish. Unbelievable. What a drive. Oh, for Carl Edwards. Right back, guys. That is awesome. Just give him a car with four tires that'll roll and go halfway in the same direction. Wow. I did. I told you guys that he was done for that one-two finish that he's been doing. That extends his streak of top two finishes. We're going to have to start calling him Cardiac Carl. Okay. Wow. All these late rallies and giving his crew chiefs probably a lot of gray hair with all these things that have happened in these races recently for him, but... Boy, he has, does not give up. And what a determined drive through the field. The championship race tightens up, too. Elliot Sadler knocks five points off the lead of the uh, Stenhouse down to 15. That's all it's going to take per race to get to be a tie. So, got three races left. Like I said, he put a little pressure on. Yep, he did it tonight. Well, we know what those fans were cheering for as Carl pulled down him under that start finish line. Here it comes. <laughs> Eighth win this season. That was eight for Carl Edwards and this team. I bet Mike Bean can't believe what he just saw. No, he's getting high fives from everybody. Uh, Jamie Allison from Ford as well. That's a big high five. Did you have any idea as hard as he hit the wall that he could come back from that? No, honestly. I mean, the thing was tore up, you know, and like I said, I think he saw that crust panel fly out back there on the, you know, and uh, it knocked the toe in out, but we just couldn't ever get the fix up. You could probably hear us talking back and forth, and, you know, he, he kind of wanted to change it, but, you know, it really kind of helped the setup while we was struggling with a little bit. And, I mean, you know, I, we deserve this. You know, I, the races we've lost, you know, I've made bad calls, and but these guys don't ever give up, and I know everybody says that every week, but, you know, that's pretty amazing. You know, just, you know, you got Carl Edwards, and I know we got him a couple more races, and I'm going to make things sure we don't waste it. Don't lose hope up there, Alan. He had never know. Carl Edwards led this race one time, the final five laps. <laughs> and that'll make a heck of a victory lane picture, too, with the right side of that car all scuffed up like that. They look beautiful in victory lane, no matter what. Absolutely. Sixth straight top two finish for Carl Edwards. And another victory flip and celebration with the fans. A lot of post-race coming up from here in Charlotte. NASCAR Nationwide Series at Charlotte. Brought to you by CenturyLink. Consistently fast speeds and honest personal service. Find out more at CenturyLink.com. Well, Carl Edwards started tonight's 300-mile race in fifth position, but just 32 laps into the race, this happened into the wall off turn number four. Fell to 27th after getting repairs on the second caution at lap 43. He chipped away, got back to second, was inside of Kyle Busch, the leader who chose the outside lane for the final restart. What a terrific fight for the win. Well, we hadn't really been able to see anybody take that inside lane and make a pass there, but... Carl Edwards made it work. 
37th career win in the NASCAR Nationwide Series, and Carl Edwards is in victory lane at Charlotte. I can't believe everything you overcame tonight to get here, including starting on the inside and the restart. Mike thought that was going to be bad. How in the world did you do this, Carl? Um, well, Trevor was behind me, and that's, that's what got us the lead. Trevor pushed, and that meant a lot. He could have gone three wide. So, um, man, this is, this is huge. I, I hit the wall really hard and um, messed the right side of the car up. But uh, it's, it's a big week for Ford. It's 110 anniversary of, uh, of Ford racing. Henry Ford won a race 110 years ago, and we're leading the nationwide points, the cup points, and um, and we're winning with these Ford Mustangs, so that's huge. And i got to thank Fast and All, Valvoline, Next Gen, Wiley X, the fans. And I want to say that, that we're thinking about you, all the Thrasher family and uh, Angela Tucker and all your family. A couple people um, lost loved ones this week, and, uh, man, just unbelievable. I, you know, I thought Brad had it, and then I thought there at the end, I thought Kyle was going to get me. He has a, an ability to turn it on at the end, and uh, he raced me really clean, and I, I appreciate that. Great race. Congratulations. 37th career win. That ties him for third all-time in the Nationwide Series. Dr. Punch? And the NASCAR Nationwide Series Dash for Cash winner. Finishing fourth tonight, Elliot Sadler with 100 grand. Elliot, great effort out there. Congratulations. I appreciate it. it. It was a great effort. I'm so proud of my race team to turn this car around for me this week. Everybody on one main financial Chevrolet worked their butts off tonight. Great pit stops, great adjustments. It means a lot to me to run as well as we did tonight with this pink race car. Uh, it means a lot to my mom, so Great night for us. We gained some points, and to win that $100,000 was cool. Let's talk about what happened with eight laps to go. A close call with the 20 car of Joey Logano. How close was it? It was close. I'm going to tell you something. Jamie McMurray told me last year about the season, the great season he was having, and the power of prayer and making sure you focus when you're in the car each and every week. And sometimes you're just lucky and in the right position. And I saw him getting loose and come up, and I just had to slam on brakes and cut there to the left just under him. And it's a game of inches sometimes, Doc, and uh, we won the receiving end of it today, the, the, the correct end. But you're on the giving end right now because behind you, come on in here, Joe and Barbara Thornton from Newport Ritchie, Florida. And Joe, congratulations. Hold that check up, Joe. Look what you just got, courtesy of Elliot Sadler and the great folks of Nationwide Insurance. What are you going to do with the 100 grand? Uh, pay off our house, we think. You know, pay some bills. We don't know. You know, it's, it's exciting. We don't know yet. It's, you know, <laughs> I'm just happy to be here. You know, it was a thrill, you know, to, to win and get the chance to come, you know. And Barbara, yeah, I know you were speechless a moment ago. Anything, anything you want to say? <laughs> well, I'm in shock. I can't <laughs> believe it. <laughs> I figured I was going to be a hero or zero tonight, so I'm glad I came, became the hero race. there at the end. Oh, we're going to back away. How, how about that? $100,000. Elliot Sadler wins it, and so do the Thorntons from Newport, Ritchie, Florida. Wow. Let's go to Shannon Spain. Trevor Bain, a third place finish for you. It ties your career best. But it was getting a little spicy down there at the end, all the Roush Fenway guys together. What was that like? I know. I was hoping for a 1 2 3 finish there, but uh, we still got a, a first and a third, and I think Stenhouse ended up ninth, which isn't too bad. But man, I was hoping we could get a win tonight. We had a really good car at the end. Uh, we battled being on the splitter too hard at the beginning, and we finally got it dialed in right at the end when it counted. And pit crew did an awesome job today and kept us up there so this was one of those races where we finally had a fast car and everything worked out together uh, there's been so many times this year where we've been really fast and just little things have happened that have taken us out but I was really happy to see fast and all in victory lane and then we got a good finish for him as well um, but pushing Carl out to the lead there at the end that was kind of fun you know I, I saw him slipping a little bit and then we got him by Kyle getting into turn one and and uh, those guys turned up the wick those last few laps I mean you really see what these cars have in them when you see Kyle Busch and Carl Edwards battling for a win they just uh they can wheel these things, but really happy with our finish, and uh, our Ford Mustang was pretty good today. And good luck tomorrow night. Third place finish for Trevor Bain. Alan? Tremendous effort for the Daytona 500 winner tonight here in Charlotte, and as Carl Edwards celebrates and takes the pictures in victory lane, that's the pretty side of the car. That's the business side of the car tonight. He sure tested that machine up against the outside wall early in the race. And rallied all the way back. Rusty Wallace, Brad Doherty down in the ESPN Pit Studio. When you come away from tonight's race, what's the one thing that's going to stick in your mind the most? Rusty? I have to say it was the uh, the miss of Elliott Sadler with Joey Logano. That was just a, an incredible job he did right there. But also good runs out of Brian Scott, a fifth-place finish right there. Yeah. And, Brad, you know, he and I were talking about the money. What about old Joe Thornton getting man. 100 grand, man? I absolutely, like that. Absolutely, absolutely. I'm going to be hitting Joe up <laughs> later on, maybe give me a little loan. But that's outstanding. I wish we did more of that. It was great to see that. But the thing I take away tonight was how hard 
Elliott Sadler drove that race car. He put himself in the mix at the end of this race, gave himself an opportunity to win the race, but ended up with a great finish, maybe had some left front shock troubles, but he drove hard tonight. Shows me he really wants this thing. All right, guys, see you for NASCAR Countdown tomorrow night before race five in the chase. And while the celebrations continue for Carl Edwards and Elliott Sadler, let's hear from some more of the players involved in the finish tonight. Mike? Yeah, and uh, Joey Logano was a, a factor in the finish, but not the kind of factor he wanted to be. Uh, brought out a late caution there getting into the wall. What happened? Uh, it's hard to say. I haven't seen a replay yet of, of what happened, and uh, your screen's not working here. But, um, you know, we had a really good game stop Toyota. Our, our car was... Uh, it was Here's a look at the replay. We're going to get that on cue here on our, our mobile monitor. You can take a look. Okay. It's, uh, it's working. but uh, Or maybe not. It's frozen. Not. So <laughs> our, our monitor, unfortunately, is frozen down here, so you can't take a look. But uh, what, what could you see from inside that race car? Um, you know, I mean, uh, unfortunately, it's just uh, it's end of the, end of the race racing. Uh, it's hard to say what happened. I, I know someone got right on my door. I think it's a 16. And, um, you know, I just had, I had a good car. And 60 was fast for me at the end, and um, I was trying to hold him off. He got a run on the outside, and obviously the draft and, and the momentum on the outside was pulling the 16 along. And uh, 16 just went on my door really, really hard. And, uh, you know, it's just the way he's been racing lately. I don't, I don't know he's been racing me really hard. Uh, I don't know if he's just trying to keep up with Ricky or what the deal is, but um, uh, I don't really enjoy that much too much. So uh, we'll have to have a little talk about it. A uh, real shame for Joey Logano. He did indeed have a very strong race car, Shannon. Well, sixth place finish for Brad Keselowski. Could have been a lot worse, though. You had that tire go down. Your thoughts on the night? You obviously had a fast car. Yeah, absolutely. We had an amazing Dodge Chandra again. Uh, and, you know, the racing guys just didn't smile on us, for sure. Uh, just uh, one of those deals. We ran over something, cut down a right rear tire, and uh, was behind. We needed more laps. I think we could have recovered and still won the race, but the, when it happened, there just wasn't enough laps left. And, uh, you know, each restart, we kept moving forward, moving forward, and uh, just uh, needed more time. And... Uh, Still feel like we could have recovered from it. Just wasn't meant to be. Good luck tomorrow night, Brad. NASCAR Nationwide Series Championship winding down to now just three races remaining. They have a couple of weeks off here before we get to Texas Motor Speedway. And then on to Phoenix, what could be a really interesting weekend. And, of course, the finale where the champion will be crowned Homestead Miami Speedway. If you'd like to join us at one of those upcoming tracks, nascar.com slash tickets. So 20 was the gap between Ricky Stenhouse Jr. and Elliott Sadler starting the night. That's what it looks like now. And at one point in the race uh, early on, it was up to 26 points that Ricky Stenhouse had that lead up to. But uh, great run there by Elliott Sadler at the end. And Stenhouse having a few problems. Close this thing up. Going to be tight. Here you see Eric Amarola and Justin Allgaier move past Reed Sorensen now for that race for third spot in the points. And that owner's championship you hear Carl Edwards and Kyle Busch talk about is just three points between Joe Gibbs Racing's 18 and Ross Fenway Racing's 60 with three races to go. That's heads up for three weeks. Oh, absolutely. And they'll be battling just like they were tonight for the lead uh, at the end of the race and uh, see who can get that championship. Top five finish tonight for Brian Scott, Doc. Yeah, what a weekend. Uh, sponsorship announcement, top five finish, and, and what a wild scramble. You had a great seat for those last four or five laps. What was your view? Uh, man, it was just exciting. We did a really good job at uh, getting our car better for the end of the race. We didn't start the race like we wanted, but uh, the pit crew and Kevin were able to make good adjustments and keep us really good track position to make it strong at the end. And Yeah, man, it, is, it has been quite a weekend. Uh, happy to announce next year we're going to have Dollar General on board and proud for uh, do something to bring home a top five finish for them at home here in Charlotte. Uh, they're a terrific partner at Joe Gibbs Racing, and it was just a, it was just a good night. How about this team getting stronger week after week? This guy could be a winner before the year's out with the kind of effort they're getting. Alan? Doc, thanks. Terrific run tonight for Brian Scott. Persevered, came in with the top five. And uh, as we continue from Charlotte, we look ahead to tomorrow and NASCAR Now, which will recap tonight and get you set for tomorrow night's race at 10 a.m. Eastern Time on ESPN2. Bank of America 500, race five in the chase for the NASCAR Sprint Cup. ABC at 7 Eastern Time. The NHRA Arizona Nationals qualifying and finals Saturday and Sunday on ESPN2. And the season finale, the Eyes on IndyCar World Championship. ABC Sunday 3 Eastern presented by Sunoco. Dario Franchitti starting 18th. Will Power 17th. Tony Kanon on the pole for that race. Ask you the same thing I asked Rusty and Brad a minute ago. What's the one thing you're going to take away from tonight's race the most, Dale? Uh, I think the biggest thing, I'm going to repeat a little bit of what Brad said, is... 
how hard Elliot Sadler drove to, to get himself in that position for the $100,000 and to keep himself in the mix for this championship. That was very, very impressive on my part. Yeah, and I told Dale, I said, you can't tell me that these drivers don't drive harder when there's money and more <laughs> money on the line. Because Elliot Sadler did drive hard tonight. I mean, really, really did. I know he's racing for a championship, too. But how about Carl Edwards and that team? No give up. I mean, they had a car that really was not a winning race car and won tonight with it. And uh, a quick thought ahead to tomorrow night's race here as we get set to go for round five in the chase. Tony Stewart on the pole. Uh, it's going to be a great 500 miles. There's going to be a lot of strategy played out in that. Uh, don't know that we saw some two-tire strategy here tonight. Uh, could see that tomorrow night. Yeah, and it seemed to work out good for some teams and not so good for others. And, you know, this cup cars have a lot more power, and there's a lot more on the line tomorrow night. A lot of cars running for that title. Hoping to uh, have been able to get a word with both Kyle Busch and Ricky Stenhouse Jr. before we leave the air. Uh, have efforted that, but have been unable to so far and have come to the end of our air window. So, uh, we'll look to hear from them uh, about the close of today's race, perhaps tomorrow, perhaps uh, on NASCAR now. Uh, it is uh, Major League Soccer coming up next, presented by Adidas. Charlotte, the home track of NASCAR teams and most of the drivers. A fast and sometimes sickle place on, where tonight <laughs> the driver who dominated the night ended up running into some troubles late. Kyle Busch in command of the race, but then Carl Edwards found a way to rally by him at a late caution and score the win. This has been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports.